Hello, um, this is the DigiDays um, Civic Engagement Group. Um, I'm Aaron Young. I use he, him, his pronouns. Um, and I work at the, um, I serve at the um, Ramsey County Library in Shoreview. I'm Devin. I um, use she, her pronouns too, and I serve at the Metro State University Library. Um, so, um, we're, so just to give some background on what DigiDays is, DigiDays is um, also known as the Digital Resource Fair. It's basically a way for us to showcase uh, local um, digital resources in the area around the Twin Cities. Um, it was held in Rondo Community Library on July 15th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and yeah, it was, um, it is and was um, a way to kind of um, express some of the local things that were happening um, and at different sites and to showcase some technology um, to the local community. Um, DigiDays was first pitched this year um, because we wanted some way to kind of showcase um, local technology um, re related projects and the things that the sites were working on because we just thought there were really cool things going on um, and a lot of different sites we were working on um, in the Twin Cities. And we found out that there was basically this thing, you know, digital resource fair, the DigiDays, that, was ha that had happened in previous years and uh, was held, um, was um, that CTEP participated in and was created by CTEPs. And we decided to integrate um, this frame, prior framework into uh, DigiDays. So that's how the DigiDays pitch came to be. So as I said before, DigiDays was created um, in 2008 by a group of CTEPs. It was um, first held in 2009. Um, and basically it became um, kind of a mainstay of the CTEP programming um, until it was canceled in 2020 due to COVID-19. Um, so our main project was to bring DigiDays back. I call it the resurrection. Hi, I'm Leah. My pronouns are she, her, and I serve at the Maplewood Library. Um, so when we began this project, we kind of realized um, it was kind of a large scope. So we wanted to focus a lot on planning on the front end so that we felt prepared and weren't rushing towards the um, end. And also because we were working with outside partners, we wanted to make sure to really be prepared so that we could give them information and keep them in a loop and that so they had time to plan as well. Uh, this included creating timelines with action items, and that was timelines for budgeting, for marketing, for just event planning in general. Uh, we determined and assigned roles. Those roles were event manager, which was Aaron, and he handled a lot of event logistics, as well as being kind of the point of contact with SPPL. Um, Maddie did outreach, so they kind of worked with a lot of organizations in the Twin Cities in order to get them involved and, you know, uh, work with them so they had all the right details and stuff. Devin did marketing, so she created a lot of the press materials and other marketing materials, and then I handled the budget, so, you know, fundraising, uh, purchasing, and everything that went along with that. Um, and then in addition to that stuff, we also created um, a fundraising plan, a plan for outreach, and just, you know, a lot of planning in that front end so that we had those due dates and stuff. So, and then we would check in about every week, every other week to make sure that we were um, on task so that we were prepared well for, you know, when the time came. Hi, so yeah, I handled the marketing. Um, the first thing I did was create a style guide to help us kind of stay consistent with our press materials. For example, we knew we wanted both of the Ds and DigiDays to be capitalized, and we just wanted to ensure that um, there was consistency throughout the process. I wrote some press releases and sent them to local publications. I wrote social media posts and copy for an event posting on the St. Paul Public Library website. And I also designed a logo and the flyer that you see here for us to include in our materials and to share with the CTEP cohort. 
I'm Nadia, my pronouns are she, her, and they, them. I serve at PCs for People. Um, yeah, so I did the outreach, basically uh, compiling a list of community organizations we wanted to uh, showcase at DigiDays um, and then reached out to them, confirmed their involvement. Uh, it was kind of the go between between the DigiDays team and our community partners. So really what we were looking for was uh, local Twin Cities based organizations that uh, provide low cost or even free access to devices and or tech education. Uh, so you can see some of the logos of our partners here, but we can go to the full list of our partners now. Um, and so basically we had a small list of previous DigiDays partners and we're also lucky that um, many of our CTEP sites, you know, fulfilled that criteria we were looking for. Um, so yeah, we reached out with that kind of as a jumping off point, we reached out to 23 organizations and we ended up with this final list of 14 uh, booths at the event. Um, so we had 11 community organizations that had uh, booths or tables at the event and then two booths, uh, the ones with the asterisk there were actually our fellow CTEP civic engagement projects that also presented at the event. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I handled the budget. So on the left, you can see our original plan budget of $570.60. We came up with that originally just by, you know, kind of estimating what we would need to plan the event and how much, and then we price it out based on, you know, information we found online and stuff. And then on the right, you can see the actual budget of $437. And that change kind of accounted for you know, once we actually kind of knew what we were doing, we had a better idea of what we would actually need, um, as well as SPPL ended up providing food and beverages, which was a large part of our original budget. So we ended up not actually needing that, um, as well as we base our final budget off of how much we fundraised. So you can kind of see that breakdown um, of those two budgets of what we predicted we were going to spend and what we actually spent. And then some considerations uh, with the budget was that the entire budget was funded through donations. So I just want to give a quick shout out to anybody that donates our GoFundMe. Um, you helped make us this possible. I think um, also SPPL, as I said, provided the food and beverages, which was a huge help when we were budgeting, um, because as I said, it was a large part of our original budget. Um, and with that being said, we didn't actually reach our full fundraising goal, which we based off of that original um, projected number, which ended up being okay because um, of because SPPL provided food, so we you know had a little bit more wiggle room for that. I think in the future we could have, if we were going to do this again, we could have spent some more time or some more money on marketing materials, so professional signage, things like that. We just didn't really factor that into our original plan, so we didn't give ourselves enough lead time to. Um, kind of organize that. So at the actual event that was held on July 15th, um, there was 32 attendees, um, 17 of which visited every single booth. So that was quite a success that they were able to interact and see everything that was able to, um, you know, that we had at store. Um, we got 11 organizations that participated, plus the CTEP civic engagement groups. And 14 raffle prizes uh, were raffled off. So that was, those are kind of the numbers that we worked with. So we did have some unexpected challenges, <clears throat> partly with the planning and partly with um, the event itself. It was a much bigger project than we anticipated. So staying on top of timelines was paramount, um, which we were able to do for the most part. On the day of, we have to shift the booth layout a bit because one of the organizations uh, ended up not being able to make it. So that was a bit of a challenge, but we did manage it. Um, there was a smaller turnout than expected with some of the raffle entrants not showing up to claim their prizes, um, or in some cases they did not write their names legibly. So we um, just solved that by raffling off those prizes again. Um, so a few challenges, but we, we handled them. Mm -hmm. Then to talk about what went well, um, yeah, as Devin said, one organization had to drop out about a week before, but on the day of um, kind of our final booth plan or booth list, uh, everybody showed up and everybody had really great kind of engaging and interesting uh, activities or table setups at their booths, which was really great to see. 
Um, also, yeah, as we had mentioned, you know, the turnout was a bit uh, smaller than we had anticipated, but um, like Aaron said, the majority of those who did attend attended uh, or visited every booth in the event. So that shows, you know, pretty high engagement level, even within that smaller number. And also shows that uh, we had kind of a map system where uh, attendees could visit every booth in the event, get a sticker at each one and turn it in for an extra raffle prize. So that shows that was pretty effective. Uh, and so both of those really show that um, kind of bode well for future DigiDays and their successes. Uh, and we're also really grateful to have St. Paul Public Library as an excellent host and partner. Uh, yeah, they provided the venue, tables, chairs, snacks, and even had their own booth at the event. So um, we're really grateful and hopeful for the continuation of that uh, partnership in future DigiDays. With all that being said, some considerations that we kind of came up with for the future of DigiDays. So if this were to happen again, possibly I think the biggest one being maybe hosting at a different time or day to hopefully improve the turnout. We did host this on a Friday from 10 to 3. So there could have been people that were interested, but you know, had to work or something like that. So we, we'd be interested to see how that would affect that turnout. Um, we also think that the raffle could be executed differently. It was kind of tricky because people had to be there to win since we couldn't really coordinate picking up prizes at a different time. So I think kind of executing that in a different way could have been more effective. And then, as I mentioned earlier, additional marketing could be something that would also help improve that turnout. And finally, we just wanted to say a big thank you. DigiDays would not have been possible without the help that we received from a large number of people, um, including, but not limited to, other organizations that participated, the CTEPs who helped run DigiDays, everyone who donated to the GoFundMe, PCs for People for donating two laptops for the raffle, and St. Paul Public Library for again being a great host and partner for this event. Um, all of this would not have been possible with everybody that helped, so we're very, very appreciative of that. And then finally, any questions? Round of applause for this group. Thanks, DigiJays. And uh, yeah, if you have questions for this group, please put them in the chat and I will read them out or comments. We take comments too, but. as love that this is being resurrected how many total booths organizations ended up being at digi days this year there were 13 total booths 11 of those were community organizations and two were uh, other civic engagement projects yes and that was lisa lambert but lisa pearson de la cueva hi lisa um just a note of gratitude for carrying on this tradition so glad you're able to do digi days Leslie, thanks for bringing back DigiDays. It's great to see. Did you try to orient to particular age groups or towards having something for everyone? I think it was um, aimed towards all ages. I think in terms of the booths, it was more, there was more to do for adults. We did see a decent amount of kids come through and there were some booths that brought like interactive activities that they enjoyed. We also had a kid's corner in case there were like young kids that came, but I don't think there was a super specific demographic age-wise. Carly says, I attended. It was, thanks for attending, Carly. Uh, it was a great networking opportunity for me to connect with folks in the digital literacy field and find resources to share with Harmony Learning Center. That's great. Allison says, I really enjoyed the interactive activities and demonstrations, 3D printer, video game, um, the photo booth. Mm -hmm. Could you maybe share, so the two big raffle prizes were the laptops, but any other, what were the other raffle prizes folks walked away with? Some of the raffle prizes were a couple of books on technology. Like there was one on um, Microsoft Office. There was a Bluetooth speaker. There were some gift cards. Uh, we had a 
a whole bunch of little goodies that all had to do with technology in some way. Lisa, again, what would be your biggest suggestion for a group who tries to put this on again next year? Um, I think like we mentioned, the biggest thing, I think our the biggest thing we would change is turnout. So I think just making more of an effort for one, finding the best time day and time that would work for people. So, you know, maybe doing some research on that, on other events that they do that get a turnout as well as, you know, really focusing on marketing and how to reach the people that we want to serve. Um, I think like more concentrated efforts on those two fronts would be something that would do well to increase that turnout. 